All right. Good morning or good evening or I think this is morning. Yeah, this is about 11 o'clock in the morning, so I guess that's the morning time. Sometimes I can't even figure out how things are and all that other stuff. Okay, I, I'm going to start doing something a little different in my channel now. and I've been wanting to do this for a while and I've never come to this point. And uh, it might run some people away because they don't really like this type of format, but that's okay with me. I mean, I'm not in it for the uh, subscribers and making, I make no money off of YouTube and stuff like that. So I can always do things the way that I want to. But, you know, when I started in 2007, uh, in 2008, there was, like I told you, there was hardly anyone teaching on the internet or anything like that. And, and um, so there was a purpose there. But now I look and, and um, there are so many people now teaching on the internet. Uh, I mean, Doug is just doing an absolutely wonderful job. Alec LaCase. Uh, uh, Van Kelly now has started a new channel that he's teaching and just doing a wonderful job uh, teaching people wood carving. Uh, you have uh, carving junkies. You have, um, I mean, you just have, I, I, I presented so many of them and gave you so many of them in recent videos that you can go to and learn carving from. So I, I want to just I want to start relaxing now and as you can see it's a it's a wet day in Texas you can hear the you can hear the rain it's coming down and um, I was feeding the birds earlier they're out there now they don't they, when they want to eat it doesn't matter whether they it rains or not then we've been getting a lot of rain here lately in Texas and uh, it is in the month of May now. I just finished having a birthday. But the, the way I want to format my channel now is not so much teaching. I've, I've got over 20, almost, well, I think 2,600 videos now. So, or almost 2,600 videos. So there's no need to teach anymore, to be honest with you. So I want to turn this into sort of just a whittling, uh, a sit-down whittling, and which is what I've been trying to do a lot lately, and I'm going to finally just say, okay, this is the way it's going to be. Uh, I don't think I can teach you anymore. I think that I would be more even enjoyable, and I have oftentimes people say, I love your channel because... It's like I sit down with somebody and I'm whittling with them right next to them. And that's the way I want to make this channel from now on. And it doesn't really matter what project uh, I whittle or whatever it is. The most important thing is just the enjoyment of sitting here and discussing things. Now, if you're not into someone talking and, and having conversation, that's fine. That's good. That's go to another channel and, and uh, learn from them. But we just lost our, um, our club again. Uh, we, the places we were meeting began to charge more than what we were willing to pay. In fact, it was extra extraordinary what they wanted to do. This, a new buyer had come in. So our club is now kind of in limbo. So we haven't been able to have a chance to do it. And nothing was more enjoyable than sitting around a table with a bunch of men and, and, and women and, and carve. And we would be carving and talking and discussing all kinds of subjects. And we would just have a grand time. We really would. Well, I miss that. So let me start something else. Now. Let's just you and me, if it's just one person out there, let's just sit down and whittle and enjoy one another. Talk about things. Now, I know young people today, talking about things is something that is just foreign to them. Um, 
This is how I learned. I learned from sitting down for years and talking to older people and talking to people and learning things. And uh, I walk in restaurants now or places and I, I see four or five people around the table with their heads down in a telephone, not even saying a word to one another during the whole meal, hardly. And that's a sad thing for me. So for those of you out there that uh, just enjoy to, to sit down and whittle with someone like you're sitting here whittling with me and you want to get you a, and it doesn't, you don't even have to get this piece. You don't even have to get uh, this particular piece that I'm working on right here. Just get you a piece and, and we'll sit down and just whittle together and talk about, look, we're, today we're gonna talk about whittling and wood carving and how it came about and, and, and where it's going and those type of things. These are the subjects that uh, I think are important to all of us as we go and we can discuss some other subjects. But that's the format that I am running to now. And I'll still explain a little bit about what I'm carving and, and all that other stuff. But not, that's not going to be the emphasis of this now. The emphasis is, is in us discussing, talking about things related to carving and, and other stuff like that. And uh, if you don't like that kind of format, then I'm sorry. But, um, well, just go somewhere else because there's plenty of channels. I mean, there's Doug and Alex the Case, and, and I mean, these guys are great teachers, they are. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a break and just try to enjoy with you sitting down and whittling. And we're gonna talk today about whittling. We're gonna talk about whittling, we're gonna talk about carving and how it came about and, and the different aspects of it and the different ways that it was you. So as I whittle here, uh, get you a piece of uh, wood, get you a piece of whatever you want to pick up, something you want, and let's just sit and, and enjoy ourselves together as we sit and whittle and uh, enjoy one another's company. Now, I got my old trusty Ron Wells knife that I've used forever, and uh, I'm just gonna sit here. You know, there's a weird no, I, I shouldn't start off with that word weird. But there's, there's particular channels, I don't know if you've known of them or not, they're called ASMR or something like that, where people just sit and listen to people, uh, like some people take a piece of wood and just scrape it, you know, just scrape it and stuff. And people like that sound of, of uh, people scraping uh, a piece of wood or something like that and it brings relaxation to them. I don't quite all understand that, but silence, uh, there's an old saying, silence is golden, that uh, we can often learn from. So that's not the kind of channel I've got either. So today, this is going to a whittling channel. Just a, a whittling and enjoying and having a good time sitting down with one another and just speaking. Well, let's talk about whittling today, okay, and wood carving. Let's talk about the history of it a little bit. And whittling and carving go back a long ways. Now, now wood carving goes back all the way to biblical days. If you read the Bible much, you, you see where um, uh, Solomon's temples and all that, those things were being built and uh, the, the different carvings and the, uh, um, uh, some of it was uh, carving in stone, but a lot of it was in wood because they, um, they brought that back there in those times, they, they found those things. So carving and whittling go back a long way. Now you often ask yourself, how in the world did, uh, did these men way back then, and how did they learn to carve, or how did they know how to carve? And um, I, I th really believe that God taught a lot of those people at that time. And what I'm saying is, when God taught them, He gave them that specific knowledge of knowing how to, to carve and to create those things. Uh, 
but it has really only been a short period of time that wood carving and whittling is, is basically become a hobby. Um, it's a hobby today to us, to most of us. Now, there are some people that do do it for a living, but most of the time it's, it's a hobby that we go through as we sit here and enjoy the time of, of just peaceful and quiet whittling. Um, some people, I took a poll, some people play music. Some people uh, uh, do it in quiet. Some people make videos like me and, <laughs> and uh, talk about it. So there's different aspects and there's different uh, things about whittling and carving that has gone on for centuries, as we know. And there are even, I'm sure, times before that time that people made, it was just a factor that people made their own tools. People did not have the money to make their pieces. Uh, people made their own axe handles, people made their own, and that was a form of whittling a lot of times. Um, I talked to a man that his grandfather, uh, he was a duck hunter and he made his own duck decoys. People just did not have money back then to afford to go out and uh, buy things. And a lot of people back then, um, if you look at the brass town carvers from, uh, uh, um, oh, it's the Carolinas, uh, these people, they would oftentimes carve and sell uh, little whittlings to stores, uh, like little little squirrels, little dogs, little horses that they would carve, and they would sell them to store owners who would buy them and sell them in their stores. Now, one of the things that we have to understand about why a lot of things today that we people find carvings that are collector's items and estate sales and by, by famous carvers is that uh, one of the concepts that we, a lot of people don't understand today, and, and listen, I'm not an expert on this, okay? I have learned a lot in my life by talking to older people people who lived during that time. My father was, he, I, I've talked to him a lot. Um, my father was born in 1918, okay? And uh, he uh, told me a lot of things that his grandfather told him, which was born in the 1800s. So I'm not an expert on everything, but being at my age now, I have learned that I have talked to a lot of people and I learned a lot of things. And that's one of the things about having phones nowadays. It's a sad thing, but and is that the reason why a lot of times people are getting rid of history is because they, they don't care about history and they've never learned about it. So I don't know, there's a mad bird. <laughs> I think they're fighting over food out there, so I'd throw some bread out there. But, so, if you're going to learn history or you're going to learn anything, then you have to understand that you have to sit and listen to people. And, um, people today think that talking to someone through a computer is having communication. And that is just not true. That is not communication, talking to someone through a computer. Now, it is discussing things, but it's not really communicating with the person because as my father used to tell me, he said, son, until you're looking a person in the face, uh, it's like doing a business deal. People when you're not talking to someone face to face, you're not looking at their expressions. You're not looking at their face. My dad used to tell me you can always tell when someone's lying by looking at their face. 
by looking at, at the, their mannerisms and things like that. And he said, I could always tell when certain people were lying by looking at them. But you can't do that on an internet. You can't do that through communication of technology. So you learned a lot at that time by, you know, expressing those thoughts that you had with people. So we have to understand that, that people had to make their own things back then. People just didn't uh, have the money that we have today to share on things. And my father used to tell me that uh, at one time there was not, w today we have what's called a middle class. But in the 1800s and places like that, there weren't really what you call a middle class. You had your, your extremely wealthy people or, or wealthy people and you had your very poor people who worked on farms and, and those type of things. And uh, it wasn't until uh, migrations into the cities that people began to get factory jobs and those type of things. So people made their own stuff. They didn't have a Walmart to run to for every uh, Tom, Dick, and Harry thing that we wanted. Uh, they had to make their own stuff. So that's where wood carving and whittling uh, had a, a very large thing to do with history. Because that's the way people, like during the Civil War, I've talked about this before, uh, a lot of the men that were, were in the um, were in the Civil War. They did not have utensils to eat with or whatever, so a lot of them whittled their own spoons and their forks and their, even, even their little bowls and, and things that they ate out of uh, because uh, some of them were issued uh, these utensils, some of them weren't. And in, 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 the, in battle, of course, they uh, did not. Um, have a lot of this stuff because the government didn't have the money to, to provide all these things. So, and uh, whittling became a, a, a very strong pastime during the Civil War because a lot of times, we, we all we see most of the time is the, the war, uh, the battles and things like that when we see documentaries on the Civil War. And the problem was a lot of these men would sometimes, there were sometimes three and four months bef between battles. Uh, now, sometimes they fought, right? but, but there was a lot of boredom in the Civil War. That's why you had a lot of people that ran off from the, uh, uh, the wars because they were just bored with everything. There was nothing happening. Uh, for months sometimes. So they would, they would oftentimes uh, take, a, take their knives and they would, they would whittle something out of it. So uh, whittling uh, became a pastime, I think had a lot to do with, with uh, the way that people um, you know, became a pastime at that certain time. And so this is one of the factors that was used in, um, in whittling. Learning how to whittle and, and learning these things. And like I said, they did it to make their own um, uh, things so that they could have them. Uh, you also heard of what was known as tramp art. These, during the Great Depression of 1929, you had, uh, uh, because of the Great, um, when I, I call the Great Depression of 1929, where the stock market crashed, you had people who were out of work, so they had to travel um, uh, and try to find work and they became known as hobos. And I carve a lot of hobos. One of my 
most popular carvings is of hobos that I have done. And these guys, they would, they used to do what was called tramp art. And tramp art is um, very similar to whittling. Uh, but th instead of wood, they would use uh, a lot of times cardboard boxes and things like that. And today, tramp art is very, very well sought after. It is very, very popular and sought after. And they're even in museums and stuff like that. So those are, you know, it, it all has a relationship to carving. It's just that we, we carve wood. Now, people carving golf balls and stuff like that, that, that is something that has evolved from our era or that our time but whittling in itself started a long time ago it started as as more of a hobby in the 1800s and like I say uh, a lot of people to supplement their income used and carved um, uh, little figures and stuff now, you have some very great carvers like uh, Axel Peter, Peterman Duhlman and um, the Triggs, T-R-Y-G-G-S people. Some people have heard of them. The Triggs were a, a, a group of family of men who carved very special figures um, that they had. Uh, Emil Janelle, uh, great carver he was from Europe a lot of these most of the carvers are from Europe but uh, uh, not all of them were uh, so people began whittling as a pastime as a time that uh, uh, because there was some issues and boredom that went on and people just just did it as a time and a place to relax. Uh, and also they could make little things and they could sell little animals or little things but to supplement their income because that was all that they had. People were very poor. Now such people as Axel Peterson Doodleman who were from Europe and, and those type of things. Uh, now remember what I said we had a, at, at that time in the 1800s, you had a wealthy and you had a poor. You didn't really have a middle class back then. 